What's the old saying about heroes? If you stay around long enough, everybody will grow to hate you. I don't know if that's the exact quote, but I hope you kind of get the point. And I kind of feel that way about Mick Foley now. Now look, I've always had a tremendous amount of respect for Mick because he was one of those dudes that I always thought got it. He was one of those dudes that literally was willing to put his body and his life on the line to entertain the people, get himself over, more importantly, get other people over. I always think when people talk about the Attitude Era and they talk about Austin and The Rock, and it's natural. It's been presented that way for so many years. To me, it was Vince McMahon that was a real star of the Attitude Era, era because he was the owner and everything funneled off of him and everything funneled through him and everybody worked off of him, ultimately. And he made a lot of people. And in terms of guys in that category of not just making themselves, but more importantly, making other people, to me, Mick Foley was damn near in that class. When you look at his work in that company from 96 to 2000, you see the number of people that he elevated, made, and took to another level, and even afterwards. I look at Mick's work with Taker, really, over a stretch of time at different intervals between 96 and 98, there was a period where I thought Taker had really stagnated. And working with Mick, working with Mankind, uh, it kind of revitalized Taker a little bit there in the mid to late 90s. I truly believe that. Um, you look at, you know, even his work in 96, was it, or 97, early 97 with Shawn Michaels. You know, they had a brutal match on Raw. I thought got a little bit more out of Shawn Michaels than you were used to seeing. It presented a slightly different side of Shawn Michaels. You look at some of his work in particular with The Rock in Triple H, and honestly, he, in a lot of ways, frankly, made those guys. Now, sure, they were talented enough that they were probably going to get made on their own. But it was Mick Foley that could have been more selfish and that sometimes maybe should have been more selfish, but was too nice of a guy to be in professional wrestling to be that selfish and really killed himself for the other guy's benefit and the other guy's expense. I think a King of the Ring 98 as Taker's throwing Foley off of the Hell in a Cell or off the cage onto the damn table, the crowd's chanting for Taker, not for Mankind. When he choke slams Mankind uh, through the top of the Hell in a Cell and he goes into the ring and everything, the fans are chanting for Taker, not for Mankind. It's like, son of a bitch, the guy looks like he's literally about to die, and we're cheering for the guy that did this to him. Oh, but even later on, after he had retired, you look at some of the guys that Mick Foley worked with and I felt like elevated them. Guys like Randy Orton, guys like Edge. The point I'm getting at here is Mick Foley has done a tremendous amount for a lot of guys in the WWE over the years. And he had a hell of a career, um, did a lot of wonderful things, former multiple-time world champion. You know, just Mick is a legend, period. And there's a part of me that says, you know, Mick did so much for the business to help so many guys over so many years um, and did so much with his body and took so many unnecessary risks and chances because that's what he needed to do to be that guy that I almost feel bad sometimes complaining about something that he does or something that he says because I'm like, eh, sometimes you wonder if the guy has all his faculties there, but more so he paid such a price over the years that he deserves some benefit of the doubt. And I still kind of generally believe that. Now, mind you, this is a Mick Foley that has blocked OTR Central on Twitter that, you know, in recent years, I thought has kind of become a, a sappy shill for WWE in large part, I think, because he was trying to get his daughter a job with the company, which I still don't believe has actually happened. Um, but his son did, right? His son's part of the creative team on Raw, if I'm not mistaken. But I will say this, is even though... I've talked about that at times. I kind of called him a punk and stuff for doing some of that. Ultimately, it's a father trying to look out for his kids. And I respect that tremendously. And maybe I shouldn't crap on it so much. Because if I was in his position, I would do the exact same thing. If not, probably try to exercise even more nepotism if possible. And I've always felt kind of bad too because I felt like the WWE is taking him for granted. I felt like people kind of shit on him with the company, mocked him at times, and I'm like, look, the vast majority of the people involved in WWE wish they were one-tenth the person, the character, the performer that Mick Foley was on a bad day, let alone a good one. Um, but you can imagine my disappointment as I found out recently that Mick Foley did a spot with Joey Ryan. 
And not just any spot, that spot, the dick spot. Not only did Mick Foley go to a show for the fun of it, because honestly, Mick doesn't really need the money, does he? Do we believe that he really needs the money? No, he doesn't. He does it because he still enjoys it. He still loves it. And sure, he probably got paid something. He's still a businessman ultimately, but he doesn't have to. What breaks my heart is it wasn't the thing of where he's a broken down, beaten old man that has to do it because he needs the money. That can be sad and pathetic, but that's at least understandable. Mick Foley might be beaten down and sometimes kind of sad and pathetic just because of all the sacrifice he made to entertain people over the years of professional wrestling. But he is not a sad and pathetic man and not in a sad, pathetic place in his life and most certainly shouldn't and doesn't need the money. So why in the heck would he, for fun, for the thrill of it, go to an indie show and agree to do a dick spot with Joey fucking Ryan? And, and especially after all of this time, one important question. Why is Joey Ryan's dick still a spot in professional wrestling? I don't want to sound like Jim Cornette, an angry man yelling at the clouds, but come the fuck on. This is the type of shit that guys have to do to get attention? And it's not even working now. Because instead of this being kind of like a one-off thing that the dude did to get attention, Joey Ryan literally does the dick spot all the time. And how fundamentally fucking weird is that? That the highlight of this guy's match, the highlight of this guy's work, is another grown man grabbing his dick and holding on and we're sitting there doing this type of thrusting action to simulate a feat of strength, to simulate a battle of mercy. And then ultimately, Mick Foley cooperates with that. Mick Foley touches the man's junk. Mick Foley sits there and sells for this midget's fucking cock. And then to top it all off, allows himself to get flipped and does a bump for Joey Ryan's dick. Shame on you, Mick Foley. You didn't need the money. You didn't need to do this. I know you did a lot of crazy and dumb and weird shit over the years and did a lot of crap. But why did you have to partake in Joey Ryan's dick spot? You should be better than that. You should be above that. And frankly, shame on people that watch professional wrestling that actually get off on watching one man grab another man's dick and then we're going to do a spot where we make it a battle of mercy, a feat of strength, a battle of wills, and then ultimately we're going to flip the guy with our cocks. Does anybody believe that Joey Ryan has a jackhammer? Does anybody actually believe that Joey Ryan can flip people with this fucking dick? The answer is no, and if they are, then I don't know what the hell was wrong with people for thinking that this fucking dude that can't be much bigger than me has a big enough dick where he could suplex people with this fucking cock power. Why in the fuck, Mick, would you sit there and do this dick spot? Why would you think it's okay at this stage of your life, to go to this show to agree to do this dick spot? Why would you bring any more attention to the ridiculousness of the stupidity of this dick spot? Because just like everything else in professional wrestling, when you find something that gets attention one time, instead of taking that attention and actually trying to draw real money and sitting there and doing something else instead to keep the coming, people coming back more and more, we just continue to hop on the one thing that one time got us a little bit of attention, and of course now it gets us a decreasing amount of attention because we've overdone it so fucking much. And now we have people copying it, and we have entire rows of wrestlers in a match that will do a fucking dick spot. Mick, why would you sit there and partake in this phony-looking bullshit? It's because we all know professional wrestling is fake, doesn't need, mean we need a reminder from somebody like Joey fucking Ryan that professional wrestling is fake. If Joey Ryan wants guys to grab his dick so bad, then maybe he should come out of the closet and or maybe he should go do some gay fucking porn. Maybe him and Ziggler, Ziggler can do something together for Brazzers. I'm just saying. We don't need a consistent fucking dick spot in professional wrestling. And fuck those fans that sit there and keep pumping this up like this is something cool or something awesome. 
Screw the fans that are going to a show where they're watching Joey Ryan have other man men, excuse me, grab his dick and think that this is okay, that this is fucking normal, that this is professional wrestling. And why, Mick Foley, would you give your stamp of approval, your credibility that is ever dwindling to this fucking dick spot to where now somebody else trying to break into the business thinks, hey, I got to have somebody put their dick up my ass. That's the next spot because that's eventually what we're going to fucking gravitate to is now we're just going to have men in the ring putting their dicks in other men's asses, also known as the Pat Patterson Rumble. And think about this. Imagine if you were a fan that loved Mick Foley back in the day, and now you're bringing your kids to this show, and you're like, I want you to see Mick. Mick is cool. Mick is awesome. And the first thing your son or daughter sees is Mick Foley grab another man's dick. Or imagine... If you've never been able to see Mick Foley live and in person, and this was your one chance and maybe your only chance in life to see that guy live, and the one endearing memory you have from seeing him live, maybe not signing autographs or getting merch from him or bumping into him casually somewhere there in the convention hall or whatever or in the arena, your memory is of him grabbing another man's dick and getting flipped by it. Shame on you, Mick. I realize you're in a position where you don't care what I think, and that's fine. But you should care what you think. Why would you give this guy credibility? Why would you give a shit like this credibility? Because just think about, now that you've put your stamp of approval on it, now you've validated it, other guys are going to think this shit is okay, and eventually they're going to try and go above and beyond. And like I said, now we're just going to sit there and have guys dropping to their knees and sucking each other's cock in the ring. They're going to sit there and probably put dicks in each other's asses. This gay shit has no place in professional wrestling. It's stupid and shame on people like Mick Foley for agreeing to cooperate with it. Unbelievable.